element. <laughs> Welcome back to another super special episode of Jealous Podcast. I say it's super special because we have the most special guest ever, Rodney M.F. White. Do you know what M.F. stands for? Manu- mutual, manufactured. Mutual, <laughs> mutual funds. Mutual funds. That's what it. That's what it stands for. Of course, because we're a clean and you're when and we're a pure podcast. Family oriented. A family podcast. So before we really get things kicked off today, I guess we have a TikTok we're gonna film, and you're all gonna get <laughs> to watch it and hear it, which is unfortunate. Come on, Randy. What are we supposed Lean to do into that? that Italian heritage. <laughs> get both it's hands going, mostly please. Mostly Germanic on one side. I can't. We'll have to put the I'm end. trying to feel your inner pulse. Yeah, just, <laughs> we'll have to put the end product in here. All right. That was weird, but that's okay. Who are you feeling jealous of this week, uh, Rodney? Not too many people, actually, I guess. I, There's I so mean, many things going on I in the world. I feel jealous of my daughters that are, you know, one's working at a, a dog boarding place. Yeah. Uh, I say it wrong every time. Dogwood Lodge. Yeah. So she gets to that would be the interact dream. with canines all day. And then my other daughter is taking classes at DMAC. So she's learning a language. She's taking history what classes. What language? Japanese. Wow. She went big. Yeah. And she's uh, got really good penmanship, too. Really? Writing it. And uh, and pronunciation because of her her hearing um, is a little... Uh, what do you call it? it it's uh it's better because of her vision mm. is less so mm. kind mm-hmm. of her mm-hmm. her hearing is more acute got it that's that. very interesting so she has good pronunciation and really good penmanship nice so your daughters you're jealous of your daughters yeah. this week i get that i'm learning something new like that you know completely well i know new. i was just telling someone i'm like i feel like i need to i don't know I sent all these guys a podcast I was listening to yesterday, and it, it's like educating me in 25-minute increments. I'm like, okay, that's good. I could never go back to college, but I can listen to this 25-minute podcast. I'm really jealous of Nathan Chen because he took the gold in figure skating. And I've always wanted to be a figure skater because, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but I tell my parents, I'm like, you, you, you were never going to produce a figure skater, like a petite little – Figure skater, so thanks. It's their genetics, obviously, not my talents, not their fault. But it always seems the, the figure skaters always have the backstory of our parents took us and drove us three hours every morning, mm-hmm. leaving at 4 a.m. to skate for two hours before school, mm-hmm. doing my homework in the van on the way yeah. and things like that. They never lived near these skating facilities. No, but like but now they move it. pretty much grow up in it yeah. or switch countries yeah. or switch, you know, go across the – yeah the country to different places to, to practice. And that's just the way it is in the United States. You have to do True. that because we don't have a program, I guess, where we pluck kids you know, when they're five. Right. My school wasn't producing many um, Olympic athletes. No offense, but they just, they weren't. But speaking of, the Winter Olympics are going on right now over in Beijing, and there's all kinds of things going on over there. What So exciting, though, we... As a team, as Bing Bang, we were able to capture photos and videos of one team and then Jesse Diggins, right? So Team Schuster, you were part of that. Yes, it was an assignment that came through Allianz Life, kind of an insurance company. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, uh, Dave Peterson, Mm -hmm. a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer who's basically retired and traveling the country in an RV, was in California. He's like, yeah, I can't do this. Could you do this? Because like, he knew I kind of like mm-hmm. to light things. And, and it just was an assignment that I thought was going to be quick. And then I started reading. He's like, eh, it's a little more involved. It was originally shooting Matthew Stutzman, the mm-hmm. armless archer mm-hmm. in Fairfield. So then I was like, okay. You I did brought, a good enough job. I, well, I brought it through Bing Bang, and then we yeah. elevated it. And, uh, yeah. And then they, they just ask us to go to Vermont, and then they're like, "Oh, can you also go to <laughs> go uh, to almost to, almost to Canada up there in Eveleth to shoot Team Schuster just to make it in time for the IOC to approve their their branding?" Yeah, I guess. and so. that was right at the end of last year, right? Was that yes. December, November, November, December? December. It was like, right, right before Christmas. End. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So they just they got beat by Sweden today, but they're they're taking on Great Britain later tomorrow or something. So. I think we could kick their ass. Second chances, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jessie Diggins, <laughs> she's incredible. She, I text, I group text the Bing Bang chat the other night. She just did this interview that was so sweet and so yeah. heartfelt. Like, she's, she's very good just, in front of a camera. I mean, just, it just turns it on. 
Yeah. Because that. I think she's probably just that nice all the time, Ronnie. She is. That's what it seemed like. But yeah. she was always on a schedule. She had to eat at a certain time. She had to rest. She had to work out at a certain time. It was just, she was wired for sound. Yeah. I'm like that too, but minus the workout part. But so we are talking to you today because not only did you capture Team Schuster footage and Jesse Diggins footage, but you have actually been to an Olympics to cover the Olympics. So I want to talk to you about that. Okay. I yeah. Well, when I was working at the Des Moines Register, I was with Gannett. Uh, when that was the publishing side, and so they would always pick, uh, they'd always take their core team from USA Today, probably six or seven guys, mm-hmm. um, and then so they, they took would, their Olympic team. Well, they would Olympics? take all the photographers, okay. literally, and then I, I knew the person who was actually the coordinator, uh, Rox, uh, Rox and Scott, okay. and then Andy Scott, her husband. Um, is the director of photography now too? Mm-hmm. But I, I went before she. I think they were still in Dallas probably mm-hmm. then because she was working. Both of them were working in Dallas, and then uh, anyway, Gannett would take five or six photographers from the papers, and I was just lucky enough to make some connections with some people and get a go to that that Olympics in uh, Greece. Okay, so in two thousand four, you went to the you went to attend or do you went you went to cover to cover it? So we when you're sent there, you get an EP pass, which is okay. basically the golden ticket. So they're like, well, between Gannett, um, Sports Illustrated, AP, and Getty, yeah. they bought high-speed lines at every venue. Mm-hmm. So we basically got uh, arrived at 3 a.m., probably two, two days before. Oh, my gosh. Um, they gave you bottles of Uzo since it was Greece. Okay, yes. <laughs> and somebody from the Gannett team was there. He's been there for maybe a month and a half mm-hmm. helping set up the logistics of transmitting photos and set up the uh, filing center. So we had our own office in the media oh, wow. filing center. We weren't in the great unwashed because they have like a large open, looks like a gymnasium, you know, yeah. where there's hun- hundreds of photographers. Not Actually, not hundred. They only allowed about 250. Total? Yeah, worldwide photographers wow. there. So we felt like, oh, yeah, you got to, you're like, I'm at the Olympics. You know, yeah. it's like, it's you, you're like, oh, I'm a little tired. And it's like, yeah, I won't get up this morning. You're like, no, I'm at the. I'm at the freaking Olympics. I'm at the freaking Olympics. Yeah. So you get your assignments overnight on a BlackBerry. And then, uh, Ooh, it's like yeah, spy yeah you had a number stuff. and everything. And then you could plug that number into the photo and it would help propagate all the information and stuff like but you still had to put the winners names in but it would yeah. put all the stuff that would help route it back to usa today but it was also the first olympics right after 9 11 not right oh, after yeah. you know a couple yeah, years yeah. after 9 11 so they had a lot of security set oh, up wow. there was anti-aircraft uh, missiles <laughs> set up oh, up gosh. on the hillsides yeah. and stuff like that they said they spent probably five billion dollars on security were you nervous a little bit they had safe houses set up for us they had places to meet like in case something goes down oh, my gosh. they said go here go there take this train here's some you know bus tokens or whatever and yeah. train tokens and stuff like that and so it was really interesting but the guy yeah the guy had been there for a month he had a, an apartment set up oh wow which was amazing it was just full of Junk food and junk food and drinks. No, we actually stayed in the media, the press. I know the press village, which was looked like it had been finished the day before. We got there and the flooring, the linoleum flooring was curved up the walls. Oh, sure. So instead of just putting like molding, they just, well, let's not cut it off. Let's just curve it up the walls. Isn't that nuts? Like you watch the Olympics, it's this high production, like amazing. And then the guys that are there to work are working in an office where they haven't even fit the linoleum to the floor. Like, what the heck? That is yeah, crazy. There's, um, and, and people said that, um, I think at the time at the register, our executive editor who had went to Greece uh, 15 months before the Olympics, he's like, there's no way they're going to be done. There's like, they hardly even started because oh they built a whole new transit system. They built a oh, brand wow. new airport. They used the old airport for a kayak facility what? for baseball, field hockey, and, uh, um, basketball, basketball, and fencing were done inside the hangars. <laughs> so it was, really? it was interesting. Yeah, that's what they, that's how they, they set it up. And most of the people were from. There was a lot of Iowa State people there uh, with turf management because oh, yeah. they're like the world leaders on setting up a you know a field in the middle of nowhere in the oh, middle of a tarmac. So it, yeah, it was interesting. And I and I got a you basically hit the ground running. You went out and shot features, mm-hmm. but basically every day you had two sports to cover. And I was um, there was a bunch of us that were kind of rovers. There was um, the USA Today team was kind of assigned to track. There was two guys. That's all they did for the whole time track. was Dude, set up remotes. A, that'd be boring. Yeah. Well, it's all the logistics in, in, of setting up remotes. And then you have to get it approved where you're going to sit. There's always a photo steward mm-hmm. at every place you go to. Um, I shot two nights of track. I think I shot the 200 and where I think USA had uh, gold, silver, and bronze in that, yeah. in the 200. And then the long jump. And then uh, – 
Wow. I didn't do gymnastics because that was pretty much we had people, oh, two man. people. That's all they did. And that's uh, was Sean. No, I don't remember if Sean was at that one. No, I, not yet. She went to I Beijing. Been like a kid. So yeah, that's true. Because I, I have kid. photos of her when she was ten, before oh. she was just coming onto the scene. She in would Iowa. have been like ten probably. Yeah. But anyway, it, it was really interesting to every day something different. Even one day they're like, okay, go out and do a color story. You get to do the marathon. So I got to go out to Marathonos that it's named after. And oh. the beginning of the mar- the original marathon. Well, yeah. Oh, was, yeah. I mean, Greece. you were yeah. in Greece for the Olympics. Yeah. It's just now clicking with me, people. How yeah. far are we into this? 18 minutes. <laughs> and it was and such seconds. a nice. Wow. It was such a nice. Uh, just the food was great. Once you got away from the Olympic Village, the Olympic Village food was like either McDonald's or like a cheese pie. That been for all these freaking athletes. Yeah, and most of them ate McDonald's just because it was a known quantity. Where while you didn't have to worry about having a travel gut, to you know they always said don't drink the water out of the tap, don't let the shower go into your mouth, <laughs> just you know just drink bottled water all the mm-hmm. time. So we did that, and then uh, yeah, you you pretty much be seven. I don't know. They always said 17-hour days. And you're like, really? And you're like, oh, yeah. you got to get up at 5, get on a bus, go out to the venue. You're out there three or four hours early. Set up a remote if you can. So How you get far a different were you view. from the action? It depended. Um, like they did, the shot put was a special deal where I, only a handful of photographers in the world got to go out to because they had the event in the original, like, Greek times. Wow. <laughs> they did the shot put in the original like oh shot gosh. put circle that, from the wow. original Olympics. But the modern Olympics were 100 years ago. It, they had come back. And uh, so it was interesting. Yeah. And I, I, I think I did the bicycle criterion. Um, I got to see eight different gold medal performances, oh which was gosh. amazing. There was like eight man crew. There was uh, uh, fencing, uh, women's basketball, women's the softball, kayaking. Wow. Yeah, it, it was just interesting, and I uh, I have some photos of that. But you know, this is a podcast. So I want. We should see. pull them up. Yeah. Let's well, if up. I can get to them, the problem is I can. Never, I'm, I'm pretty slow at getting to As you to these pull them up, what's the biggest? Um, what do you think would be the biggest surprise that people didn't know about, like the behind the scenes of the Olympics? I want to know the dirt. Spill, well, like spill the Olympic. Like tea. for photographers, like even just seeing. Um, I've seen a couple of people talk about what they're doing at the Winter Olympics. You mm-hmm. think you can just like, oh, you go out there and you kind of scout a spot. No, it's there's everything's kind of set ahead of time by the photo stewards, and then you go out and try to find a different spot that might be more better for a certain body. So the body language will be good mm-hmm. to coming over. You don't want them just sitting up straight. You want them kind of like struggling. Yeah, you know, that's always the thing. The photograph you can photograph something struggling, but it has to be approved. It wouldn't all, take much to no. photograph me struggling. Yeah, all these spots have to be approved by a photo steward, and most of the time they're Americans. What are too. their qualifications? Other photo editors, a lot of them are our photographers themselves, and, and a lot of them are, are Americans, too, that they use. Of course, watch, I won't be able to find it. I just had it. Yeah, the um, that's what uh, the photographers who've been covering it for a long time at USA Today, they like going out to the more esoteric things instead yeah. of swimming, like go out to handball. and. Well, that's, yeah, that's a picture of Sean Johnson. Oh, I she, thought you had it pulled up. That's Sean Johnson when she was 10 and just coming onto the scene. So me and this other photographer went out and shot a picture of her, a portrait of her, um, at his uh, training facility. And watch, I won't be able to find it. It was right. I'm just looking at it this morning. Oh, there it is. So I got to shoot. Uh, uh, there we go. I got to cover the opening ceremony. So that's wow. where I was. I was basically right there by the uh, the flame. So they had the flame. It was probably this 200 foot tall replica of the torch, and then it just cantilevered down, and this guy ran up this walkway and I'm like right on the opposite. So I am, I'm probably just 30 feet away. The wide angle lens makes it look bigger, but this is full of all the athletes and everything. And then this torch comes down and he lights it. So oh. I got to shoot the opening ceremony. And that was something wow. they, they usually shot the opening or the closing and stuff. Oh, cool. And they had this great, just this whole spectacle of a show with, with uh, uh, sculptures that were hanging by wires. It, it was, wow. yeah, it was really nice. Um, I got to yeah. shoot one thing of Phelps. I think he lost oh, this wow. race. But this is a shot of Michael Phelps. Oh, my um, gosh. That you, you, um, obviously. You should yeah, see. that's the you're, – you're, you're basically stuck in a spot. So most of the time you can't just wander around like we would at maybe a local basketball game or yeah. something like that. You pretty much have to pick a spot and then maybe set a remote up. Um, yeah, there's the eight-man crew <laughs> that – yeah, throwing the coxswain into the water. So And these are u- ubiquitous, the Athens, that blue yeah. with the date and where it's at. That's mm-hmm. always in – they, they make sure that's in the background of every photo. Um, yeah, 
uh, Bustos. Oh, Jenny Finch, right? Yeah, Jenny Finch. I got to see Jenny Finch pitch. It was wow. like an all-star team, and the people who didn't make the softball team ended up playing for other countries, like Italy. And Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah, if you couldn't make and most of these people, but they all train in Arizona. It's just the way. It's the way it is. That's the main training facility. Kind That's of for something softball. I don't think anyone would yeah. know. But I think Busso's hit like three uh, home runs. That was the only scoring for that whole game. So I was in a spot. That's the one time I can say I was one spot that nobody else in the world was. They had these photo wells, and the, the Japanese had figured out if you order a phone line for transmitting, yeah. then you get to sit in that spot. So they ordered a phone line in the, the dugouts which is like a prime shooting spot because you're field level and you can see faces better and eyes. And so those were completely full. Most people were up on the mezzanine shooting down or shooting from the roof. And yeah. they had two photo spots out at center field. So I had a, 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 tele, a super telephoto lens so I could zoom all the way back. You shot that from center field? Yeah, that's from center field to Holy. get that reaction shot. And You the, should be like a spy right yeah. now, just and, looking at people's windows. Well, yeah, <laughs> newspapers you don't you don't quite do that, but for sports you have to. Yeah, you, you pick views that you are going to give you the best faces. That's incredible. And that's and since it was three home runs was all the scoring. That was really all there was for photos. There was no plays at any of the bases or anything. It was the reaction of the teammates and stuff, and then you get <laughs> things like that. Yeah, um, teammates. And then there's Kerry Walsh and Misty May. So they <gasps> they won the beach volleyball. You got to see like pr like primo. <laughs> yeah. And these people were in their prime at the time. Yeah. Phelps, this was like his first Olympics. He didn't like clean up. It wasn't until the next one, but he did win at two or three events wow. at this one. Oh my gosh. I remember watching this year. I would have been, yeah. what, like a sophomore <laughs> in high school? <laughs> And that's and Shelby's like I was just born. <laughs> no, I was just. To me, it's a, another Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, there's the oh, that's a, uh, a Greek marathon runner that they oh, built a statue. Wow. He won the first modern um, in, in the 1800s. Won the first modern uh, marathon. So they built this in the median of, uh, and so I went out at night. It was nice. They, they, Guinness literally like, well, here's an interpreter and here's a cab. Mm -hmm. See ya. You know, oh, I was like, gosh. really? Okay. <laughs> Just so you went out for a day and drove up and down the route to talk to people and stuff that like this. Like it's like, taken. they're selling it like yard, uh, yard ornaments and they're selling Corinthian and Greek columns. <laughs> like, Oh, you want to buy a columns in your front yard? And it's like, so that's, you know, things like that. And and then I got to cover Kale Sanderson, who was hey. a big thing. We just covered him, and I'd even done a poster for the paper where we did three double trucks, and you got the full-size poster of him. So he was actually coached by his, uh, his Iowa State coaches, and then he ended up taking over for them. Oh, fun for fact, he years. was in my cousin's wedding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to and see him. I was like. He's a great guy, yeah. Yeah, so I got to see him win gold. Wow. Wow. Um, um, and then that's the closing ceremonies. Just I was outside, so they, they just wanted you to go around the placa, which was so cool to to, to look at all that. So that's the really marketplace cool. and see the, the 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 ruins that were up on the wow. Like we got to visit. There there was a couple times where in the seventeen days I think we were in country, we got to go out mm -hmm. to Hydros, um, the last day. And basically, all you can do out there is just sit around and eat fish and and that's and, not, and go swimming. And then you take these dolphin boats, which are like call that it's not hovercraft they're the ones that have the wing like under the airboats well there it's a wing underwater so it kind of lifts up and then you're floating on that wing but anyway th that, that was the the fun one and then these are others <laughs> stuff i did for the newspaper i know <laughs> i got random depressing okay yeah. so wow that's really 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 but yeah cool. the olympics are fun to cover but they're kind of a contrived event too it's like here everything's happening in a fishbowl so it's like yeah. right here so it's that's what was fun to go out and do those stories like somebody went out and did a story on the the wreaths that uh -huh. they put on their head. Yeah. Like for the winners would get a wreath. And yeah. that, that was a big deal. They made them by hand. They made them out of the original. Did you, whatever, when you came home or, or your stuff was just like you were saying, you were sending it home live. Was your, the stuff you were shooting showing up on? Yes. In the USA Today and the hometown papers. So a wow. big part of sending uh, extra photographers along is to get what we call it hometown news. Yeah. So somebody would call and say, yeah, I need the fifth rower in the mm -hmm. b team <laughs> and mm -hmm. you're like and that thing's like a half mile away <laughs> so you got to get this super telephoto lens you know it's almost like where those those houses are yeah that's how far away that's as close as you get so you and those photos look incredible though yeah so you're zooming in just to get a shot of that one person for the hometown paper so there's a lot there's a lot of that but that's yeah. that's why they send us and don't rely on yeah. like Getty and things because they're worried just about the winners, the gold medal performances okay. and stuff. So we're there to do the stuff for the local newspapers. That makes sense. I yeah. never would have thought about, about why. Yeah. That, that was, that. The, um, that was a great service that we did. Wow.
Let me okay. see. And I was going to show just a, like, I don't know if this means, this is Robert Smith. He played for Ohio State and then the Vikings and stuff. But this is like when he was in college and things like that. Well, so, and great, this is on film, you know. And, great segue because we're about <laughs> to talk about football because the Super Bowl is next weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm not as invested in that as, you know, maybe I, I used Why? to be. I did get to go to a Super Bowl in uh, Detroit. So that was a nice, another event where it's like they bring in. A group of photographers and what yeah. had happened it was 2006 so it was the winter olympics were going on yep. so the gannett main crew was going to that and then they, they again brought basically the hometown people yeah. from the olympics of 2004 and then we got to shoot the, the super bowl and and i looked out i got a spot i was in the front row sitting next to the sports illustrated guy so they bought a ticket did you get yeah, no, we basically talk. I think he we like switched lenses and stuff yeah. like that. But it was a thousand dollar seat, and they bought two seats. Totally. You, you got to have one for you, yeah. one for your camera. Oh, shoot. and he had one for him and one for his assistant. So this this is a Heinz Klutmeyer. Klutmeyer, he's like one of the main SI photographers for the last you know fifty years. And <laughs> we're sitting there in the end zone just to get the shot. They, they're they're just taking their chances by they bought two spots, and so we could um, shoot. Yeah. Um, Who won the Super Bowl that year? The Steelers did. It they was did. Steelers and Seahawks. Yeah. I don't know if that was their first one. Two thousand six. So you, yeah. that's where you sat the entire the entire time. Yeah, I sat the entire time. But then we went. Our workroom was right by the locker, the Steelers lockers. So I think I got um, so Jerome Betts um, retired after that game. Yeah. So he was like smoking a cigar. So we got to go in the locker room <laughs> and really? things like that. Yeah. And so he's like getting dressed. And he's like. It went his hair, and all of a sudden he just do breaks you have up. The, do you have any of those pictures? <laughs> no, because – and that's the thing. Even in my Olympics, I have like a handful of Olympics photos, even though I might have taken thousands, because we would transmit the images or just give this to a runner. Talk sometimes. about how times have changed. That I mean, oh, you yeah. could have a copy instantaneously now yeah. if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. Were you, are you allowed to keep that stuff? Like, um, Well, it's easier now laws? because back then it was – well, we, we don't have rights to the use of them. Right. We can use them for things like this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, very cool. So, but did it, like, for both things, did like, it feel like you were even at the Super Bowl? Did it feel oh, yeah. like you were even at the Olympics because you were there working? <laughs> we're right in the middle of it. Yeah, I know, but it did it feel like? Yeah, because when you when I talked to a family of four who were like from Springfield, Illinois, and they were there to watch the swimming one uh, at the swimming yep, venue, yep, yep. so they paid they paid like a thousand dollars for the four of them just to go to one two hour um, session. I guess I wouldn't even think about the cost of going to the Olympics because going to the Olympics seems so far out of reach that I wouldn't even ever research how much an Olympics ticket would cost. Because yeah. I got to say, I enjoy my view of the Olympics from the cat. I love, do you like the Olympics? I love the Olympics. I, I did. I, I'm glad I'm not covering the, the, the Winter Olympics would well, have a little extra. Um, especially just, this year. Well, yeah. And it's also getting to the spots. You got to get there three or four hours early. You got to have like, uh, people have electric heaters yeah. and the and the, the hand warmers mm -hmm. you got to worry about your That's if your true. battery's out because you're out in the middle of nowhere um up on a hillside you can't just like step off and go inside and come back they have to have skis they so they ski down either sometimes they go take the lift up and ski down or they have crampons on and they have to walk up to their spot and these are i don't Absolutely. know two mile <laughs> two mile long courses sometimes walking yeah. up the hill and then you're there for six or seven hours in the cold oh so. my gosh no so yeah, it's a little. That's in yeah. I have great respect for the people who do the Winter Olympics. That's probably the toughest. And then they'll go from the mountains, and then at night they they'll do the figure skating. I was just gonna, so how far apart do you think are the like this? They were all over the place. To the like how far? Like how many miles? Oh, it, it could be like two hour differences. Really? Like when we were in. in it uh, feels like in it Athens. Is, it feels like it is just like. Right over there. They're skiing yeah. right over, up there. Well, like the soccer stadium, I think, in, in Athens was probably a two-hour bus ride from wow. the Olympic Village. There was a main Olympic Village where they do the track and things like that. And then they had, like, some big events, like I said, at the old airport they mm -hmm. built. But for the most part, yeah, it's the logistics of getting around. That's why you're like, that is why I'm up at 4 a.m. Because yeah. you have to ride, you have to get to the bus, which isn't just going from your thing. You have to take a bus from your where you're staying to the media mm -hmm. center, then take another bus out to the venue and that can take two or three hours yeah. and there's only one or two of them. You can't just, there's not one every 15 minutes. You have to make sure you catch the right bus. You have the right gear. And that sounds overwhelming. I don't think yeah. that would not well, be it's for the, everybody. And they were very good at setting this all up for us uh, yeah. ahead of time. We showed up probably, like I said, two or three days early and they were still putting grass and putting <laughs> um, a cobblestone down for the walkways and that such like crazy. that. 
It, it, yeah, but it was beautiful country at the time. I mean, there's really it's kind of there's not much to do in Greece except for I would go eat and drink. I'd go and, then, and yeah. I'd find a beach and some olives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, super super back to Super Bowl. Sorry, I'm all over the place, but I'm really yeah. Nerding but covering the Super Bowl, I sat in one spot. The Rolling Stones played the halftime show. Wow. They, so I I got shots from my spot of that. Yeah. There was probably four or five people on the field. Like I said, somebody opposite of me in the other corner. AP had a couple in a different corner. So we just you just kind of hedge your bets. What was security like at the Super Bowl then? That was 2006? Yeah, it, it, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, – we got there – I think we got there the, the morning before, and then we had a big team meeting, so we'd go out for a meal and stuff like that. But it really was – everything we had to do was inside. So mm -hmm. we, we went to the Canon Pro Service. What's nice is all the – uh, the camera companies set up a pro service. So they'll bring in their, like, if you see some of the, the things that they have set up, they'll have like 300 of like the top lenses. So it's kind of hard to get a lens to borrow through the pro service during Olympics, Indianapolis 500 Super Bowl, things like that. Cause it's all going out to, they, they, they bring like a, a room full of like an area the size of our office would be just full of cameras and lenses that they rent out for free. Because oh, they wow. want it in your hand. They want to see in, yeah. in the background on TV that white lens of a Canon or a Sony. Oh. And they want to see that body or a Nikon black. That is so you know. interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of a promotional thing they do for pro service. And sometimes you pay for that, You too. were an original influencer because you well, were no. there <laughs> holding the Rodney MF yeah. white. But there's other people doing that. I mean, who do that? Like I said, the people I – it all started – my first professional job was in Iowa City. At the Iowa City Press Citizens. So Andy Scott, who's now the director of multimedia and photography, <laughs> the, he's I think yeah. on he's on his like seventh <laughs> Olympics. But I hired him as a part timer. You know, he was you there. You hired him? Yes, for about six months after well, school. Well, that sucks to be him because you're at Bing Bang and you're <laughs> way off. You're way better. But he went from there to Dallas and yeah. the Dallas Morning News and was there for a while. And then he was eight today. Yeah. And then I've actually he's helped me um, do some drone work too because we nice. had a drone program they started up and that was. Through, through Andy and his wife. So, okay, drones were not even a thing that you could just, any person could fly back in 2004. Are they using a bunch of drones? Like, is, are there a bunch of drones I have around heard, Beijing right now? I've seen that for the, um, for the network coverage, yes. Yeah. There are uh, um, some drones, even the first person view drones like we're starting to use. They're using yeah. that for some, following the, um, um, the snowboarding, yeah. just some of those short, um, like the jumps and things that are more mm -hmm. artistic, yes. Cool. They're able to keep up with them and stuff like that. But, yeah, it all – yeah, it was, it was just interesting that I, I, I was – luckily I got to uh, have a lot of people go through yeah. Iowa City at the time when I was there. And then I, it's – yeah, there's some really great photographers that are <laughs> going around. Like, You're the best. Yeah. You're the best. Would you go back to an Olympics or a Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean now if if it's yeah if, when it's fun to well it, it, like I said the way they were organized was it was it was really great that I mean, other organizations like we'd be done at the Olympics we'd be done shooting like they they just spend two thousand dollars for you to show up for two hours and, sh and take some pictures and transmit from uh, trap shooting mm -hmm. and then that's it and then other and then you just gotta go and then we left you know and I was like I covered that one American and then mm -hmm. when you're leaving like this German photographer like hey, can we use your <laughs> can we use your internet it's like no it's not mine to give sorry. So we were like, so you got into a fight with a German photographer. Well, it's I just like, want to do that. We had the sometimes you took the router with you, Give so me like they couldn't, but it was just like all these people <laughs> were just like it. drooling because they're like, You've got internet and we were using cell Whoa. cell phones, and or even that they have to go back to the that's filing center. That's your own center. fault, buddy. Well, that's and like I said, they, they would preparation, put, they would put the money into it, but yeah, the, wow. it's like they do that with everything from the Oscars to sporting events, yeah. And and, and that, I, I got to go to the Republican National convention the last time when trump was selected yeah and that was interesting they ran five miles worth of ethernet so oh, we were wow. sitting in spots what yeah so they, they would go in ahead of time and you'd buy this stuff by uh, i don't know hundreds of yards at a time and have their own crimper and they'd make their own ethernet so your camera as you're shooting is plugged in and a and an editor who's watching there's well, like five editors are watching tv so as you're shooting they're just writing captions as they, they see the photos come in live. They just pop in and they can batch captions. They're like live tweeting the. Basically, yeah. They're basically. And, and then we would, during the day, we would go out and shoot any kind of. I mean, they had it cordoned off like a Supermax or whatever. That is in really Cleveland. interesting. People do not. I do not know. I would not ever know. Like, I just, yeah. I just, it's out of my realm of knowledge so i just don't even go there it, it's an experience and that maybe that's why sometimes photographers like that are kind of aloof because they're like well it's our 
it's our day to day job. But if we got really excited about it, we couldn't do it. I guess oh, is the way to see it. it. Yeah. Much, yeah. Well, and that was a big thing. You know, if I had a piece of <laughs> advice, it was that our we'd always the photographers would always say, yeah, there's no cheering in the press box. Is one thing. You just had to like keep it way cool. <laughs> well, you're just like okay, you're working, and the other is like. You know, just act like you've been there before. That was a big thing under Hayden Fry. He's like, that's why the, you know, at the time the team, you know, somebody scored a touchdown and they dropped the ball and went back and go over. But just act like it's like, like a normal like thing. Like yeah, you know, cigarette. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of downtime, the hurry up and wait is what yeah. we call it. Yeah. News, news photography. Get there early. That never happens you know. here, though. Yeah. <laughs> Not even today. Not even today. To that's true. record this podcast. But you pivot. Now that's the word is pivot. I know. It's mm-hmm. annoying, isn't it? I, I use it a lot. But we do have to pivot. Yeah. No, you, you you just go with the flow. And then after a while, you've seen everything. You've made mistakes. I've probably done everything wrong. <laughs> I even went to an assignment where I didn't have the lens. I was like, I got the aims and I'm, there's a press conference in 20 minutes. So I went to the camera store and bought the cheapest lens they had, <laughs> like a $60 lens. When was that? Oh, I don't know. I can't say no. Is the Statue of Liberty? It's uh, it was like 2005, and I remember stopping at the the camera store because I was up there for something else, and I was like, I looked down, I was like, hold on, where's my? Oh, oh somebody no, else has got that, Rodney. and I got this, and it's like I need that lens or a lens. You pivoted this, and you went to the camera yeah. store, and then cards. I'm, you know, Walmart. <laughs> we used to stop it all the time. Tape, uh, mini tapes. For a video, we used to shoot that for about five years. So we could, you could go to, you can get a ten pack at Walmart. You've seen things. a lot of change in this oh, industry, in like, technology. What's and the biggest delivery. change you think? Well, like when I started, we always talk about like earlier, you know, pre nineties. Photography was a craft and like a trade. You could learn it because you, it was the logistics of trying to try, you know, take a picture, develop it. And then it's going to be printed on toilet paper, basically. It's going to be black and white. There's not a lot of subtlety to it. So it was more of a craft. Mm-hmm. So you had to kind of learn to light things just to be able to, be able to see people's faces in yeah. the print. And then when it became digital, it became a little more artistic because then you didn't have to worry about those uh, getting color balances right like you used to. I, I, it like, I can't even imagine now shooting something without seeing the image immediately. Um, before yeah. we would shoot it on film, but we did it with a fl- with a meter, and you'd sit there and take a meter and put it on somebody's face, and it's like, okay, that's that's neutral gray, that's eighteen percent gray, and that's going to come out this blah blah. And you'd head in your head, or I'm shooting a four hundred ASA film, so it's one over four hundred at f eight. That was the f eight and b there. That was just one of these things, or it was manual camera, so in the dark you could close your eyes, and I could turn a knob and turn the aperture, and I knew what the settings were without seeing them. But now it's all digital, so there's no like stops. It's all LCDs and things like that. So, but it is more artistic. I think it's more democratic now that everybody can get out there and take photos. I, I, I like that idea. Should, you do, but you, but it still floats to the top. People who are good, it's still that vision. Yeah. People who see photographically, you yeah. can kind of and the stuff. We always called it like the wire look. It's um, tight, tight shots where you basically uh, you're looking for a shot that doesn't have a lot of. Um, doesn't ha- take a lot to in- interpret it, uh-huh. is what I call it. Yeah. So you take out the extraneous, and it's like, how much can I remove? And bam, right there's the story, you know, in one photo. And that's that's when you think, you know, you've got something. And that uh, there's only been a couple of times I, uh, if I even said I have it, but you do um, have it. You're amazing. a couple of times. Like this was a shot after. Aww. Oh, it's even going to tell me. No. <laughs> yeah, that student ended up being kind of famous. Let me see. It was. Oh, it's the wrong one. Sorry. There's times, yeah, there's there's a version of it where you can see. But, yeah, have the football player get up onto the goalpost what at the same time. What year is that? Their, their genes Man, are telling me it's that. like. It would have been 2002, <laughs> it might have been. That's definitely they beat Nebraska. 2000s. Yeah, they were still, yeah, still Big 12. So it was, yeah. The but logo just logo on their, on their helmet. Yeah. The, all the, but, yeah, the, just <laughs> things like that where it just tells a story in one photo and there's not much. Uh, oh, and then my other right. favorite photo, which. Uh, of my favorite concert photo is oh my gosh <laughs> Billy Armstrong from Green Day and and I had other photographers because basically every night they were That's in a different cool. place and these Gannett photographers like what did he what do you do to get that because normally he, you get three songs you go to a concert yeah. and a photographer you, you get in there you get three songs sometimes just a medley but they they'll play one here and then he'll walk out you know on on a gangway and then come back but on this one I was 
doing a Hail Mary where you put the camera up and you shoot. So I wanted to get just the camera away from me down here on the yeah. floor to yeah. over here. And he went right up to the camera. And he was smiling at me when he first came up. And then he just, I got this series and he just flips, flips it off right at the camera. And I'm, I'm over here and the camera's over here. Did you pee here. a little? No, no. It, well, it, it was later because somebody, the, the reviewer in the stands was like, did he just flip you off? <laughs> and I said, like, yeah. And I took a picture of the back of the camera because I was, you know, it's just oh. starting, but I was done. After three songs, they, they kick you out. So I love it. And then, uh. And then um, this is the one time that uh, Kirk Ferentz was carried off the field when they beat Minnesota. Oh, was, look at that man. He's yeah, just he's, he's, he's crying a little bit. He's got a rose, but they weren't going to go to the Rose Bowl because Ohio State had a hair. totally undefeated season. I was had a, a, a Big Ten undefeated season and had been to the Rose Bowl before. It, it, the oh. way the criteria was, they weren't going to go. Yeah. But he was carried off the field. It's the one time he's been carried off the field. I think they beat him 55 to 40, or no, okay. it wasn't even that, 41. It, was, it wasn't a close game. It was where the, the, the <laughs> Iowa fans, well, the Iowa fans tore down the goalposts yeah. and tried to take them out of, <laughs> out of the Metrodome. Well, so they, they set off crowd control you're making sirens. You're sound bad. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but they exactly. set off crowd control. Um, I think this might be the one where they caught the couple in the bathroom too, or something. Anyway, yeah, yeah. you celebrate how you. But celebrate. yeah, it, they call it Kinnick North because there was probably thirty thousand, yeah. thirty thousand <laughs> Hawkeye fans there wow. in comparison stuff. So that's like one of my favorite football. And then I, um, there was another one of uh, yeah. See, I, I, I'll be searching. Anyone forever listening for it. to this audio, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have to tune in on the on the website to um, see it or YouTube. Yeah, that that's otherwise I. What's yeah. your favorite oh. photo ever, ever, ever? Oh, I ever. know that's a good one. That's Ashton oh, Kutcher with. Is that his brother? Oh, who's that? That's Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> well, who's that? Oh, the guy runs Dwala. Ben. Oh, I thought it was his Ben. Brother. I forgot the guy's name now. We got that part. He's the guy that started, and, and Ashton <laughs> showed up to do interviews and things like that. That was basically he's a big he was a big investor in it and things yeah, like that. Yeah, um, I knew that totally. Knew yeah, that. one of my favorites. I'm not. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. You have to know. <clears throat> okay. Okay, two more questions. The, sure. your, the favorite yeah. event that you've shot, and then what's one event that you want to shoot? Favorite event you've shot or thing, and then what do you want to shoot? <laughs> you can't answer me that. It's really weird. Yeah, I just shoot whatever they kind of point You shot, you me shot at. a photo of those. Oh, the here's one of my favorite, bathroom. just weird because it reminds me of a movie. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, this was in Oakville in 2008. God. And the. That is sad. His the, ears are down. Like well, you know, yeah, that pig didn't make it out. Prob probably not. And, and, <laughs> but it's like a scene from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? <laughs> or for there's like an anime thing that my daughter watches where it's just is flooded and you just we were it was perfectly still, That's sad. but it was like this bowl of like ten thousand acres of water okay. up to the second floor. Yeah. But it was, but I. I that one got oh. some traction uh, well, sure when I sent it out. Well, I'm sure that's home and livelihood and well, farm. Yeah, man, the pig probably was, came from about two miles up the road, too, yeah. and kind of floated down there. But <laughs> that that flooding, yeah, it just kind of says flooding and all. It's one of those where I thought, okay, you just, it's just right there. You don't take a lot out. <laughs> Holy Pumpkins, shit. like, so it always had an editor who called it the thrill of monotony. <laughs> like you cover the same thing every year. So instead of going to the fair to cover the big thing, this guy um, – he runs a tree service, but he, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it just, it just, it shows you how big it is by, he's using a crane to do it in the size of, but that is how big these Huge are 1400, pumpkin. yeah, they're 1400 pound pumpkins and they're worth money. Like people steal the seeds out of them at the fair and everything, you know, just everything like, you know, carry being offered a beer bong. <laughs> that's like, that's why politicians don't go through tailgating. At, uh, <laughs> That's so funny. Football. So okay. it's just in. What here's do you my, want to shoot? Oh, go, go ahead. I don't know. Do it. I don't know. Push I think it. a lot of see a lot of people go out and shoot weather photos too. Is that a real bird? What's happening? That's uh, at the University of Iowa at the, by the baseball diamond. <laughs> I sound incident. like the biggest dumbass today. I'm no, no, sorry. no, no. It's fine. My kids it's, woke me up at four o'clock this morning, and I haven't fully recovered. Yeah, and without seeing it, it's hard to describe it, but. <sighs> What would I want to shoot? I don't know. I always talk about like the underlying dynamic. Something. What, what, why does something happen? And being able to show that, not not just what happens day to day. A lot of the stuff we would do for the paper at times for photos were just reactive. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this happened today. We'll get a photo. Yeah. This happened today. But you you want to kind of see what's the underlying dynamic. What mm -hmm. caused that? I guess my job was always to cover Iowans, and and I they had a couple of friends who went on to be world beating photographers. Who they like? Okay, we covered Iowa stuff, but you know they want to see the world and yeah. get out there, and then. Just be in the middle of it, you know, yeah. and uh, 
kind of share. And that's why I get bored if I see the same photographer stuff over and over because you want to see different views on stuff. Yeah. It's if you just saw one photographer's view on stuff, it would get kind of boring after a while. And you wouldn't. You, you still need, you need that voice. You know, people people with different visual voices. Yeah. I guess is the way I describe it. Who is your okay? One last question. What's your who's your favorite Instagram? Who has your favorite Instagram grid? You mean like photographer? Yeah. Well, it'd be that. Because uh, they keep saying. Why? Uh, David Gutenfelder, the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gutenfelder. Well, he was the time Instagram. He was the first Instagrammer of the year. He's won every award so except for the people go to. Oh. Yeah. No, he, he set up the first Western Bureau in North Korea for AP. Wow. He, he's a geographic fellow now. He got to spend a month in Yellowstone just horseback riding and catching, you know, guys that live around that area and just – just real things that happen mm -hmm. to real people and, you know, not, not tied to an event, except it was tied to the, you know, anniversary of Yellowstone mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But, no, he just has a view that I think, again, doesn't – it can be open to interpretation, but the idea is that it's just that's a storytelling photo and you just, mm -hmm. like, it's right there. And the view just – it just speaks to you right away, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't, it's the only way I can describe it because some photographers will have to write a three-page – Dissertation on why that's a good photo. <laughs> but you know when it's <laughs> a good Otherwise, you photo. look at the photo and it's, there it is. It just, yeah. it speaks to you right away. It has an emotional response. That's kind of, we used to teach a class at Iowa State. I love it. <laughs> you, you, you go big or go home, as that's we right. call it, which means use a big lens, get in tight if you can, <laughs> go graphic, or get that, um, get the storytelling point, get the moment. Moments yeah. are always king, and that's what uh, evokes an emotional response, connect with people with a photo. I think you do that every day for us. I think you are so talented. And I'm so glad that you're here. And <laughs> I'm glad we finally got our one on one podcast ready. There, got Long that out of the way. Long time coming. Got that out of the way now. Yeah, never again. I don't even know if this one's good. I know to a air. podcast about f photography is, okay. is, is tough. That's all right. We, that's what, that, yeah, we're good. We're good. So thank you. Who's taking the Super Bowl this weekend? Or next, next I weekend. wouldn't mind the Bengals just because of Burrow be having a, that little – anybody who's flown over Iowa is an Iowa, and he was born in name, so, yeah, yep. I, I could see them. I <laughs> so. agree. I agree. <laughs> That's what Plus we always Plus the say. Rams moved out of the Midwest, you know, screw Yeah, them. screw, them. screw <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.